This is Michelle, the Beale's wife. I didn't anticipate that I would be making a video um, in the past few days as I've been praying about everything that's taken place. I really feel urged by the Holy Spirit to share with you all what he's been teaching me, especially in this past week or so. Um, before I go into that, I really want to say thank you for everyone who has prayed for us over this past year, who even prayed for us in all the years prior, for our ministry, for our family, all of you close friends, all of you who may have never even met Nabil personally, just followed him online. Um, thank you so much for your prayers and support. Thank you for your continued prayers and continued support. Um, I am just seeing through your generosity and through your faithfulness, just pieces of the generosity and faithfulness of our God. So thank you. Um, I know just those two words don't suffice what, what I feel for, um, for all of you who have been walking with us through this. So I don't really know where all of this is going to go. I just feel compelled to share what's on my heart. Um, I've made a couple notes here on my computer. Um, Nabil had a way with having everything in his head. Um, I'm not that same way, um, but we're just going to move forward as the Lord leads. And so let me, let me just share with you a, a, a couple of these things. Um, the first off, one of the things that he's shown me is, well, that he's led me to, um, is that I've chosen not to place upon myself the burdens associated with the terms widow and single mom. Now, these terms in and of themselves are not bad things. They just have a lot of, they have a lot of negative connotations. So while, yes, I will use them on official paperwork and for communication as descriptors, um, what I really want to focus on, what God is really helping me to focus on first and foremost is that I am a child of the Most High King and He provides for the needs that are associated with those descriptors of widow and single mom. And it's in that identity that I can find strength. It's in that identity I can find security despite my circumstances. So starting in June when Nabil really was going through his, um, started to go through the really intense pain, not being able to eat, and then eventually hospitalization starting in July. And I felt myself going from feeling less like his wife to feeling more like just his caretaker. And um, my, my expectations of Nabil began to be exposed. So as I was crying out to God, during that time, he reminded me of how scripture says, my God will supply all of your needs according to the glorious riches in Christ Jesus. That has been true all of my life. But to hear it now and to realize moving forward, since God does not change. Moving forward, he will continue to supply all of my needs. He just allowed Nabil to be a conduit for a period of time. And that was, that was a privilege. It's not a right of mine to have a husband it's a privilege. Um, and all along, even when I wasn't really seeing it that way, God was supplying the needs, sometimes through Nabil, but ultimately it was God. And so now even when Nabil is no longer here, God is still here and God is still supplying. His word doesn't change, he doesn't change. You know, in these, 
these things being said, these things that provide strength and security and, you know, my needs, going to God for all of my needs, it doesn't mean that I don't have things to wrestle with. Especially, as I said in the video back in May, I said this peace that I had, it was a peace that I believed this would lead to healing. We obviously find ourselves in different circumstances now. And I'm going to have to wrestle with that. So there, there's a lot I don't know. But what I do know is that God is big enough to handle our questions. And he's compassionate enough to lead us to greater and deeper truths. So yet again, because God doesn't change, despite these circumstances, despite, despite coming to a point where the things that I thought I could lean on, the things I thought were true, um, turned out being different, very, very different. I think those, those words are not sufficient to describe what I'm trying to say. Um, but the important thing is, even when I don't know, God is big enough. Even though I don't know, he's compassionate enough. And he can lead me through the wrestling. He's big enough for me to wrestle with these things. Um, along those lines, Pastor Greg Mott of, of Houston's First on this past Sunday. So at our church, he preached on, um, he preached a message that was kind of a continuation for we Houstonians who are feeling the after effects of Harvey. Um, and he mentioned, you know, it's one thing to go to God with your questions. It's another thing to question God. And that latter is what you really need to be careful about. Um, so if you find yourself starting to question God, you've got to think where that motive comes from. Does it not mean then that in our, in our hearts that we might think that what we see or what we thought was better than what God sees and what God thinks? Like scripture says, his ways are not our ways. And you know, even going back to Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. If that's not sovereignty, I don't know what is. He's in control. Um, but more than that, he's, he's in control, but he is is good. I don't understand why. And that leads into this next point, actually. I don't understand why, but I don't need to. I don't, I don't need to. And even if God told me why, I would probably not be able to grasp it with my, his reasons, with my finite mind. Because he is God with a plan, with intricacies that span the entire universe through all time, and I am one tiny little thread on the tapestry. So I really don't think I would even understand if he said why. However, and this also goes along with something Pastor Greg said about two weeks ago, you know, you don't always get the question why even answered. But what we can move forward with is, what now, Lord? For some reason, you allowed this to happen. Because you're not a mindless being with no purpose. <laughs> and so what now, Lord? He has a plan. And I want to be a part of it. Somehow, so we 
his plan um, is is going to bring much greater glory than the plan I had in mind because that's what he's about glorifying himself now I as you know I and um, our prayer group in the Beal and many others around the country and the world were praying for healing and some even a step further than that um, after Nabil's death we continue to pray for resurrection and that's something I can go into at a later time um, I don't regret any of it because I believe it is purely from Scripture that we do such things now Nabil has already shared in many of the previous vlogs the specific scripture that addresses praying for healing or that addresses healing um, but yeah even and I, I can just mention one thing here one thing that aside from this drive that I felt from the Holy Spirit to pray for Nabil's resurrection after the time of death was called um, I had my own personal <laughs> drive um, but then as the days progressed because it was actually seven days before he actually before he was buried um, from the time of death till he was buried it was seven days so for seven days I was wrestling praying for resurrection and after a while you realize you know in circumstances like these you realize at the end of the day you can only rely on the Word of God you can only rely on the one thing that is unchangeable and just briefly in talking about praying for resurrection um, <laughs> our prayer group um, one of the members of our prayer group brought up how when Jesus was sending out the 72 disciples he was he told them four things he said heal the sick raise the dead cleanse the lepers cast out demons I am a disciple of Christ I choose to be obedient to what he says like I said we can I can go further in detail at a different time I don't have everything ironed out I just know I don't regret a moment of what we did I would do it all over again regardless of having this outcome you know I think about Jesus in the garden in the garden of Gethsemane and he's praying sweating with drops of blood in earnest crying out to God the Father giving him his desires. Here is what I want. But your will be done. At the end of the day, your will be done. And so it's not that God didn't listen to Jesus in the garden. It's that his bigger plan was to make Jesus' torturous death on the cross the most beautiful turning point in history. Because he died, we live. Death is even a redeemable thing. It's not beyond God to redeem. It's not beyond God to use death for his greater purposes of glorifying himself and showing his love to the world he created. I have just one final thought that I want to share. Um, as I as I watch the bulldozer push the last remaining part of the dirt into Nabil's grave, 
and that was the seal right there. I, um, I came to a point where, or I said, I'm going to continue to pray for resurrection as long as Nabil's body is above the ground. So when his body was below the ground and the time of closing, the time of battling for Nabil's life was over, this thought came to me that I am fully convinced that God will use this death to a more glorious end than we would have seen if Nabil were still alive. Nothing has changed about God's character. He's still sovereign, good, and trustworthy. The whole reason we exist is to bring him glory. And when we do so, we are stepping into the best life we can possibly imagine. We just need to ask for the ability to set our eyes on things above, set our minds on things above, not on things that are on the earth. Letting God teach us to see things from a spiritual versus purely physical perspective. So, like I said earlier, I do not claim to have all the answers about what's going on. All I know right now is I believe God is leading me to share with you all these things that he has put on my heart in this time, three days after the burial of my husband. And my prayer is that as I wrestle, for any of you who are going through similar tragic, challenging, unbelievably gut-wrenching circumstances. Or maybe not even similar, maybe just whatever you're going through is feeling tragic and challenging and gut-wrenching. My prayer is that you too can feel free to wrestle with these things. However, with your eyes on Jesus, as opposed to the wind and the waves. Because when you fix your eyes on Jesus, he leads you. He loves you so, so much. And he is ready to draw near to you when you draw near to him. So I'll close by praying for us. God, we don't understand. We don't understand why you allowed what you allowed. But we believe you are sovereign, you are good, and you are trustworthy. And that your word is true and that you are unchanging. We believe you. We can depend on you when everything else falls apart. And we believe you are big enough to handle our questions. We believe that you can continue to move us forward, that you want to continue to use us. And we didn't address this in this video because I'm not at that place quite yet. <laughs> You are there for us when we have tears to cry and anguish in our souls, just like you were there for David in the Psalms. You listened to every word that he said. You're big enough to hear all of us and wrap your arms around us and just listen. 
as Jesus wept for Lazarus, Jesus still feels our pain. So thank you, God, for being available. And pray that you would draw so near to us as we seek you. In Jesus' name. Thank you all for listening and for watching.